We will just pick it up from Luke chapter 11 from verse 1. Amen. Yeah, so it says, Now it came to pass as he was praying in a certain place when he ceased that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. So he said to them, when you pray, say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us day by day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for you also forgive everyone who is indebted, indebted to us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. God gave them a simple yet a powerful prayer at the time. It is a, just a few lines of of of, uh, of prayer. And probably if I ask most of you here, probably this is one of the prayers we have already memorized. Even most of our school children, if you ask them to pray the Lord's Prayer, they are taught at a very young age to pray. This same prayer, Jesus had shared it earlier. Again, when he was, I think it was during the Sermon on the Mountain, when he was teaching and preaching on the mountain and giving that sermon. At some point when he was talking about prayer, he was talking about uh, this aspect where there are people who, who approach God with a lot of words and, and just words. But then he told them, but when you pray, pray like this. And again, he, he had taught about this same prayer. And so the fact that when the disciples again came, and ask Jesus to teach them about prayer and he repeated the same prayer it means it is an important prayer it is a prayer that we can learn something from praise God you know when I was in school and I I learned I, I, in this lesson called literature studies in literature some of the things that we used to observe was something called repetition repetition is when if something, if something was said and again it is repeated, they used to tell us in, in literature class that if you see repetition, it means there is emphasis or something being emphasized. And so we see Jesus, when the disciples came to him and asked him to teach them how to pray, repeating the same prayer that he had told a while back. And so it is, that tells you it is an important prayer. The way you can learn something from or it is something, it gives us like a backbone of, of what maybe should encompass our prayer. That as we call on God, we, we, we get the, the, the gist of what we need even as we desire to pray to God. Praise God. And so you say to them, when you pray, say this, Our Father in heaven. The aspect I see there being brought, the first thing is, looking and referencing God as Father. Praise God. I was reading a comment at someone and someone was saying that this is actually the, the, the time when, when God when, when it is captured as people uh, referring to God as Father. Previously in history God had never referred to people had never referred to God as Father but Jesus is bringing another aspect that God even though he is God is also your father. So you are talking to your father. Praise God. And you know because I'm a father I know how my daughters come to me. Praise God. They don't compose themselves. You know you know for those of us who have maybe you are employed you are in job and, and you are going to talk to your boss. You don't just walk in like uh, Anyhow, at least I know for me, if I was talking to my boss, I would probably compose myself. I've already set the agenda. I know when I get in, maybe I'll say hi to him and I'll go straight to the point. Praise God. Or you, you, you have very nice bosses. You can just pass by and say, I was just passing by to... Uh, yeah, some of like Steve says he has a nice boss. But generally, the bosses that we have are people that you... You approach them officially. Praise God. 
But you know because I'm a father, I know how my children approach me. Them they don't they don't plan like now ni ile siku tunaenda kusalimia baba so washa prepare agenda. They even pass by to just say hi. Praise God. They don't they don't prepare to come and see me. No, they they just approach me whenever they want. Kitu kwasumbua they call in time dad dad huyu ndugu yangu ananiangalia sana any any time they have even small issues they raise to me and so sometimes i even just tell them si hata wewe umwangalie tu akasema ni sawa and the answer is sorted here the bible say is talking about our father it is good to know that you are talking to your father even though he is still god but also there is that aspect of him being our father praise god hallowed be your name that reference reference in god and 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 knowing his name is high and exalted the bible says jesus was given a name that is above every other name at the mention of the name of jesus or the name of god demons flee that in the name of jesus even every knee bows and every tongue confesses that jesus is lord and so his name is hallowed or is is worship the name is is exalted and the next line says your kingdom come we are praying and we keep asking that the kingdom of god will come praise god and you know you as children of god it is always our duty to ensure that wherever we are the kingdom of god is manifested in that maybe plot where you live in that place of work in that uh, neighborhood wherever you are as a child of god you always keep to desire and pray that the kingdom of god will come praise god and so we always have to to know that whenever we have been placed in it is your duty and your role as a believer to to desire the kingdom of god to manifest in that place praise god think of this think of an an ambassador you know an ambassador if now you see for instance a good example is the US ambassador to Kenya where he is in I think he should be in Gigiri you know there someone told me if you if you are in their comp- compound even the flag that is raised there is not the Kenyan flag it is the American flag if you make a mistake when you are in there in their compound they will prosecute you on american law not kenyan law why because that ambassador being there comes and represents the kingdom or the the, the rulership of america in kenya and you know something will happen here in kenya and you will hear the the ambassador of for instance the ambassador of the united states commenting on that matter and as soon as they comment you will hear usa as say this about this matter because he has the power to whatever he, he says and whatever he decides to do there he speaks as though united states of america has spoken it is the same case for our ambassadors who are in different countries in the territory where they are in it is they are representing kenya praise god and that is why when people are out there and maybe you are stranded you are advised to maybe move to to the high commission's office or the where the embassy is for for kenya probably there you will get help because there kenya is represented you are representing the kingdom of god in that territory praise god that you've gone to that place of work or that place of business or that place of of residence or whatever other place where your god has placed you in 
you stand there representing the kingdom of God. And that means things cannot be done the way things are done normally. Why? Because you are there just the way United States will set up their embassy here in Kenya. Things there will not be done the way Kenya will want to do. No, because they are there. Even the flag that is raised, it is the flag of United States of America. Where you are as a, as a believer, the flag that should be flying there is the flag of the kingdom of God. The language that should be spoken is the language of the kingdom of God. If there is situations that are not aligned the way things should align, it should be dealt with according to the kingdom of God. Praise God. And so you will not find maybe, you know, I hear even in there the security that are, the people that are attacking, the security people are people from there. So out there you may find uh, Kenyan people outside, but you go in there, it is a different world. It is basically a portion of USA in Kenya. May also wherever you are as a believer be a portion of heaven here on earth. Praise God. That you know now because there is a believer here things are not done the way they will normally be done. Situations will, are not addressed the way they will normally be addressed. Because an ambassador of God is here we have to do things different. He represents a different kingdom and that is why we don't now, even though we could be in the world, the Bible says, Jesus was telling the disciples, you are in the world, but not of the world. Praise God. So you are in the world, yes, but not of the world. That means you represent a different kingdom. We represent a different kingdom. And that is why we, we might stand and say, now, the kingdom that is now ruling here is a different kingdom. So these things... Things the way they should be done should be done at the kingdom way and that is the kingdom of God. And that is why you say, your kingdom come. Wherever you are, always keep praying. May the kingdom of God come. Praise God. And the other thing is, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. The will of God always being done. What is the will of God in a situation? What is the will of God? The will of God is, is that no man should be lost, but all men should be saved. That is the will of God. That is why he gave Jesus. The Bible says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. It is the will of God that none should perish. And that is why I'm glad this week we are praying for souls. It is the will of God that none should perish. We need to keep praying that his will will be done. Praise God. That the will of God is done. Give us day by day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And do not lead us into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Buona asifuesan provide a way for escape. Praise the Lord. So now, because God has promised you'll never be tempted beyond that which you can handle. See, sasa wewe uende utafute temptation uko sasa. Uende uji expose. Unaenda unachiachilia tu. You'll be Praise God. Here the prayer is lead us not into temptation. Asking God. Why? Because this world if you are not led by God you will fall into temptation. You need the leading of God. You need the leading of the Holy Spirit day by day. Why? Because out there there are things that the enemy has planned for you hoping that you will fall into one of them. But it is always a prayer to ask God to lead you not into temptation, but to keep delivering you, delivering from the evil one. Praise God. Deliver us from the evil one. 
verse 5 says and he said to them which one of you shall have a friend so there is this story of of someone who got a visitor at night people are already slept and so he had a knock and a friend came in and this friend this visitor came in and there was nothing to eat in the house and so he decided to go to the neighbor so it's like now me going to pastor ken and saying pastor nimepata mgeni nisaidie na mikate mingapi tatu akule i think this bread was small bread sniv you know if you finish three breads sorry or scones yeah this guy needed three uh you know when i was in high school i used to finish a full bread myself nowadays i don't finish and it was 500 grams just so that you know i don't know i think i was still growing anyway so this man goes to to the neighbor and requested for three breads give me three bread uh, i have a a visitor and i have nothing to give and you know now this neighbor is telling them you know me and my wife we are me and my wife and my children we are already in bed i cannot wake up i didn't know i was wondering why why was it hard to just wake up and give until as i was researching i realized those days they used to stay in one room it was most of the time family would stay in one room house and this one room had one part which was raised a bit a platform when others where people used to sleep this other area the other area they used to bring in animals to sleep there so cows goats used to bring them in so that they are also sheltered and protected and safe and i realized you know when i was young i used to grow in the up country that used to happen we used to sleep in one room <laughs> with goats and chicken those days so there was a bedroom the sitting room when you are going to sleep you bring in goats even cows which are aging you bring them in because if they are rained on they may die at night so you bring them in chicken will have their corner goats their corner cows somewhere and i realized yeah so that is used to happen those days so so when you are asleep you need if you want to wake up you need to figure out how to maneuver between these animals by the time you get to the door you have a whole thing to maneuver so you are not encouraged to move so once everyone is asleep and maybe they switch off the light i think the it was the handheld torch so everyone is okay we switch off the light see you in the morning so you can imagine now trying to maneuver you may step on the chicken and kill them you know if you step on a chicken you will kill and all these things too so it wasn't just this guy who was just um refusing it was the inconvenience of trying to wake up again if you have children you you may push them and they are awake again you know all these challenges for those of you who have had young babies i remember when we had young babies i'm not saying this man had babies i'm just thinking our baby some of our babies and you can guess who those babies were you just make slight movement and they awake and they'll cry for another one now and it is me it is 3 am in the morning so if you are waking up you will move so swift smoothly because you touch them and they are awake you will spend another one hour now and so i could feel this man maybe he had babies and i imagine now if i wake up i may disturb them they will trouble me again are you getting the picture and so he told them now i we are already in bed i cannot wake up now just figure out what to do but this man kept insisting he kept knocking and knocking until eventually he had to wake up it says i say to you that is verse 8 though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend 
Yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. So this guy will not even give three. So he will rise and give him as tell him, okay, how many do you need? Because I think the word was he may come back again. So let me give you as many as you need so that you don't come back. You know the visitor may finish the three and one more. So give him as many as he needs. He's six and a half so that you don't have to come again. Tumalizane. Praise God. This story is talking about persistence. Persisting. But you know this story what I learned from is that this was a man and this was a friend who in the first place he was not intending to give but he eventually gave. This story is different. It is the opposite of if we were to compare this story with our heavenly father, it is the opposite. Praise God. There are things I want us to look at which are like comparing this story now with our father. One, this was a friend. But God is our father. Praise God. There is a difference there. Do you know if today this is my father and this is my friend and, each of, and I needed 1,000 and I know each one of them can give me. Who will I go first? If I go to my father him one thing I, I assure you, you'll not even ask me, Utarudisha lean. You know, friend will ask you, so Utarudisha when? My father will give me an, na yo story to me, Maliza, ata sirudishi, he is my father. Praise God. Na ata ya najua sirudishi. This was a friend, our God is not a friend, he is a father. Praise God. So there is a difference there. If a friend when pushed Kidogo, he will give you how much more will our heavenly father do it? He is more willing. Praise God. That is our father for you. Here we have talked in the previous verse that he is our father in heaven. You know, there is always a difference between a father and a friend. Baba Yangu, if I needed a thousand, you can ask me, Will a thousand be enough to sort the need? Then I tell him, or can I get three? So he'll say, will that be enough? Yeah, that will now be enough. So you will not again give three, will give four. If he asks, to make sure, if, if I ever need more, he will give. For a friend, he may tell me, um, mi niko na miatano. Si, nikupatia miatano. Ile ndio hiyo ndio inapatikana. Si ati ana, si ati ana mia, ana hiyo thao. Pata naona huyu, chua, anaweza kosa kurudisha wacha nimpatie miatano. God is our heavenly father. Praise God. The other thing I see, huyu jamaa, he was already asleep. He was sleeping in bed with his children. The Bible says, for our heavenly father, he never sleeps nor slumbers. Praise God. Him, he never sleeps nor slumbers. You can always go to him any moment. You can go to your father any moment, any time. 3 a.m., 1 p.m., 10.30, whichever time you want. Hakuna time, sasa ya God, says you na God, say. You can approach him at any moment. Si kama rafiki unasema sasa ina imefika masaa saa tatu siwezi mpigia. Unajua kuna marafiki ukipita saa mbili you you always call back asubuhi. Thank God for those friends who you can call even at 3 a.m. But there are friends you hata wewe unajua tu hey, isa hizi siwezi piga itabidi hii issue itabidi ngoje mpaka asubuhi. God never sleep no slumber that is what the scripture says. That is our God for you. He never sleep, no slumber. That means you can get help more quickly because he is God who never sleep, no slumber. Praise God. The other thing I saw is this man was going to the friend to 
to get bread. Now, you know there is a possibility that hata huyo friend akosa hata yeye akua ana bread. Praise God. So that is a possibility. Kwamba you can go to your friend but hata yeye ana. But one thing I love with our God, he mamesema the earth and everything in it, they belong to him. Cattle in a thousand hills, they belong to him. He's, he is, he on kila kitu. Even the things that you have, you, 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 ye bado is our God. If there is a, if there is someone in need somewhere, he has no problem coming to you and picking and giving to whoever he needs because he owns everything you you are just a custodian of those things but even beyond this beyond that is the fact that this man was looking for bread and he went to the friend and he was able to give him god yeah yeah he is the bread of life god is the bread of life what that which you really need si ati anakupatia he he is that which you need praise god he is the bread of life and that is why even though this man this was a man and he was pushed and he was able to give how much more will our heavenly father do it for you he will do it quickly praise god because he is our father he never sleeps no slumber him he owns everything yeah pungukiwi unajua sometimes as men men are limited sometimes i know personally there are times when i wish i could maybe help someone but sina god yeah kosang that is the good thing about our god praise god i have a few minutes verse 9 so i say to you ask and it will be given to you even ndo sasa unaambiwa wewe uliza there is a part of the scripture which says we have not because we ask not kuna vitu zingine hatuna kwa sababu hatujauliza and what we think we are what is what we think is asking is complaining do you know sometimes we go to god and we complain sasa mungu we kwa nini uliruhusu hii situation ikuje wewe si uliza ask it ask god what you want him to do even do maandiko yamesema so i i say to you ask and it will be given you there are things that we have because we ask not we have not asked for them the book of i think the book of james talks about that said we have not because we ask not or sometimes we ask but it is for the wrong motive you know sometimes you ask for things not because you really need them but because maybe you you've seen peter ako nayo sasa unataka hata wewe ukue nayo ndio ukae kama peter si kwa juu ulikuwa unahitaji ama unataka hiyo kitu ndio flosie marafiki and that is why sometimes you don't get so i say to you, ask and it will be given seek and you will find knock and it will be opened to you praise god for everyone who asks receives whoever asks that is what the scripture says and you six finds and to him who knocks it will be opened if a son asks for bread from any father among you will he give him a stone no if your son comes and asks for bread how would i chukua mawe tisaza ndio hii mawe no or if he asks for fish will he give him a serpent instead of a fish no sasa so, sijui kama kuna fish atapatia na nini. Tutaambia tu sina fish, sivyo? Or if he asks for an egg, mayai. Sema dad nataka mayai. Will you give him a scorpion? No. If you then being evil know how to give good gifts to your children. If I thought these people were evil, but when it comes to dealing with their children, He, they know how to give good gifts then it says how much more will your heavenly father give the holy spirit to those who ask him praise the lord 
I see two things here in this portion of the scripture. The Bible says, ask and it will be given to you. What the heavenly father does when you ask and you seek and you are doing all these things, he gives you the Holy Spirit. Praise God. You ask, you go asking God, God, I, I, I'm looking for a job, I, I need this and that, I need this and that. What he does, he gives you the Holy Spirit. When you have the Holy Spirit with you, it is able to guide you to maneuver all these other things. The Holy Spirit is such a, a dear friend and, and such a companion to have in our lives. Praise God. That when you have the Holy Spirit with you, you will go to that interview and you, you are being asked questions and answers. The Spirit is downloading them to you and he's telling you, say this. Even answer, questions will be asked that you don't even know them. But you hear something telling you, say this. And you say that, and those people are, are impressed. Praise God. I remember there is this time I, I was going for an interview and I was so so full of the Holy Spirit. It's one of those interviews you feel chat. I even didn't care about the outcome of the job interview. But I was just feeling the, the, the leading of God. And, and so I went to this company and they asked me, so how do you know us? How, do you, do you, how did you know about us? And to be sincere, I wasn't... I knew one, one small thing about them that I had seen in a newspaper. I had seen another company which were advertising for a job and I had applied. But when this company name was given, they had said, under, now these are the kind of name, group of companies. So the, the name of the company I had applied for a job uh, was given and then they had just said, under, now these are the group of companies. So now I was applying for a job now in the group of companies. When they asked me, how do you know about us? I quickly remembered. Something told me, do you remember the company once went? So I narrated to them the story. I told them, you know, I have applied for a job in your sister company. The company was in a town. I told them the building, it was in fifth floor. I once went there and they... <clears throat> And, they, uh, and I met someone, I met some tall gentleman. Uh, and he, that guy was tall. He was very tall. So I told him, I met a tall gentleman, he came and uh, I explained to him that I need a job here. So he told me, do this. Uh, sent, I, I told him, I even had my physical CV, I wanted to give, and he, he told me, ah, here we don't take physical CVs. He gave me an email. And I gave them, I still remember the email. So I, he told me to go and submit the document to this email. And you know, as I was talking the story, I could see them, uh, they keep smiling at each other. And when I was done, they told me, we are that company that you had gone to. It is us. And I fell in my spirit. <clears throat> I have gotten the job. And they told me the tall guy that you, you met is called Felix. He's still here. When you come, when you report, you will see him. It was a turn deal. Praise God. I'm telling you to be sincere. I don't even know why I thought of writing that story. Because usually I would, I would tell them maybe, um, uh, uh, can I tell you something? I don't even, you know the way they will tell you, go and read in, uh, try and go to the website of the company and learn about it. I had not done that. And so that question caught me by surprise. The only thing I knew about them is the, the fact that the company was under this group of companies. And so I just narrated to them the story. I haven't told them, you know, at some point I, was, I wasn't sure about direction. I thought of going to your sister company and asking them the direction. They told me, you know, this is the company. We relocated from that place. We are here. And we've renamed now fully that company name is no longer, it has been fully merged to the mother company. And we are that company. 
That is what the Holy Spirit does to you. He gives you answers even in questions that you were wondering what to say. Because to be sincere, that one, I had not done any research about that company. I just remembered and I, I just narrated them the story of my previous engagement and I could tell from the smiles that I have hit the nail on the head and indeed I hit. Next, the following week they gave me an offer letter. Praise God. And you know I had even blundered in some of the questions. They had asked me how much do you want? And I had said some funny figure. But when they were offering, they offered their standard company rate of money. What I had asked for was like um, they almost tripled what they gave me with what I had asked. Slightly below three times. It's like two and a half times. That is what they gave me. That is God. Praise God. I'm concluding. I know it is almost eight. By two minutes to eight, I'll conclude. And so, what God does when we ask is to give you the Holy Spirit. Praise God. When you have the Holy Spirit with you, the Holy Spirit is able to guide you to places of provision, to places of solution. With the Holy Spirit, is able to teach you, to counsel you, to comfort you if you, if you need to be able to comfort you. The Holy Spirit is our teacher, our counselor, our guide, and all that. You will walk somewhere here, the Spirit telling you, stop or do this. Talk to that person. When you have the Holy Spirit, it's like now you, you've been given someone who will be there with you to handle every issue. Praise God. The other thing I, I saw from this is that as you keep asking and calling on God, what God does is release the Holy Spirit. I have a belief that the people who keep praying continually, those are the people who are full of the Holy Spirit. You see, if you if you have never taken time to pray, at what point will you have the Holy Spirit released to you? Because here yeah, the scripture says, if then you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? So as you, you are going, you are asking for bread, or you are asking for something else, but then what God does is he releases the Holy Spirit to you. Praise God. As believers, what we really need is to be full of the Spirit of God. To be filled of the Spirit. Why? Because when you have the Spirit of God with you, the Spirit will direct you to places of provision. The Spirit will direct you to, to places of peace. The Spirit will direct you to whatever you need to do. And, and with the direction from the Holy Spirit, your bread is taken care of. Needs have been taken care of. And that's why we want, we need to keep desiring to be filled, to be full of the spirit of God. Praise God. That is the best, the best gift that God gives each one of you and me. The Holy Spirit. The best gift that our Father gives us is the Holy Spirit. When Jesus was going, he told them, I'm going, but there is someone who will come. I, have, I must go so that he comes. That is the spirit. Praise God. That is when Jesus went, he allowed now the spirit to come and be with us. And so we've got to keep desiring to be full. We've got to keep, we've really, really just gone through this portion about prayer. We've got to keep on praying. It is what the disciples observed Jesus and they saw the game changer in the ministry of Jesus is prayer. That's why they came and told Jesus, teach us to pray. Because they realized there is something with prayer. The power that Jesus carries, he obtains it in prayer. They had observed his prayer life and they realized there is something. And I'm glad today we are here even to pray and now hear the word. Let's keep on praying. If there is anything we, we have to do as believers is to keep praying.
prayer doesn't actually change God, but it changes us. When God releases the Holy Spirit, I assure you things don't remain the same in our lives. Do you know there are even things you can keep praying for, but then over time you realize the, you even never needed them. Because why? Because even as believers, we don't even know how to pray. But the Holy Spirit teaches us. And even the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. Praise God. Because we don't need know how to pray. There are things you are praying and, and God is just wondering, wow, if I answer that prayer, Sai, he doesn't know what he's praying for. You don't know what you are praying for. And the scripture says that we don't even know how to pray. But what the spirit does when it is in us is now the spirit will come and intercede. You, you are praying for this, but the Holy Spirit is interceding for you. It says even in, in groans that even words cannot express. That is what the Spirit does when he comes within us. Interceding, interceding, interceding. So you will be praying for this and, and, and the Spirit knows you don't need that. He keeps interceding for you for the exact thing that you will need. Because the Spirit knows this is the real need here. Your real need is not this. Your real need is this issue. If that is taken care of, you need a byproduct. We need the spirit of God within us. If there is anything we have to desire, brethren, is the spirit of God. We don't know how to pray. Sometimes you are praying and you think you are praying right, you are praying wrong. But when the spirit is there, it will keep interceding for you. Praise God.